forgetting l'oubli créateur. <laughs> forgetting is a good thing. Hi there, Steve Kaufman. And today I want to talk about vocabulary and the importance of forgetting. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell to get notified when there's a new video. And if you're on a podcast service, please leave a comment. I really do appreciate it. So when I wrote, I should, yeah, when I wrote my book, here's of course the English version. Here's, I just happen to have the Chinese version nearby. A personal guide to language learning. The linguist, I called it. Linguist means someone who, you know, speaks many languages. That's the original meaning of the word linguist. Whenever I say that, I get attacked by people who study linguistics. But if you open up a dictionary, that in fact is the number one meaning of the word linguist. Most English speakers are not familiar with the word polyglot. Anyway, when I wrote that book, I said the most important sort of measure of how well we know a language is the number of words we know. Vocabulary is key words and phrases, but phrases consist of words. So you have to have words and to be fluent, you actually need a lot of words because the native speaker has a lot of words. So if you're exposing yourself to native speaker speakers in conversation or watching a movie or listening to a podcast, all of which are tremendous ways of improving in the language, you need a lot of words. And while I sometimes hear people say, well, I can be fluent with 500 words, because 500 words accounts for 60% of most content. But in fact, that's not true because the low frequency words and frequency declines very quickly. As I've said before, they're key to, you know, the gist of what any content is about. The high frequency words are not a problem. They repeat off and very quickly get to know them, but you need these other words. You need a high sort of vocabulary level. So how do we achieve that? I think one of the things that can help us is if we accept the fact that we're going to forget, not only accept the fact that we're going to forget, but realize that forgetting is a key part of the strategy of learning. And, and there are a number of references and I did a bit of Googling. So, you know, I, I, I Googled uh, Proust, Marcel Proust, the, the French, uh, you know, novelist, and he has this term, l'oubli créateur, the creative effect of forgetting. And sometimes those things that we don't deliberately try to remember, they kind of stay there. That was his intuition. Now, if you want to see a more scientific a sort of explanation of that concept, I uh, uh, recommend that you Google for Robert Bjork, uh, B-J-O-R-K, and the word forgetting. And you'll see a number of, of videos that he has done, which explains why forgetting is such an important part of learning that in our memory, we have the ability to retrieve something, but we also have this issue of what we have in storage. Okay. And to some extent, if we try to train the ability to retrieve a limited set of information, words, for example, we aren't building up that storage, larger storage of material that we may not be able to retrieve right now, but it's there potentially available for us to retrieve. And he explains very clearly that once we forget something and we retrieve it again, and maybe we forget it again and we retrieve it again, we're expanding that sort of reserve of things that we can uh, uh, retrieve. We are developing a large vocabulary and to do well in languages, we need a large vocabulary. Even if our large passive vocabulary is not available to us to use, or gradually becomes available for us to use, it is enabling us to understand, to understand, you know, interesting conversations or interesting sources of, of information in the language. So I think sometimes in schools, we are trained to not want to forget. We're trained, you know, the teacher teaches something and we've now got to try to remember it, or we have tests on what was said in the story. And we're very much oriented towards trying to get it right, trying to retrieve it. And I sometimes think we would be better advised to accept that we're going to forget and accept that the process of forgetting is, is building up this reserve that our ability to retrieve that information is, is going to improve. But in the meantime, we also have to build up that reserve of words that we will eventually be able to access better and better. Robert Bjork also uh, has videos on interleaving, pointing out again 
how important it is to, to learn things in different environments and at different times and in different ways, read about the same subject matter in different books. I've called this grazing in the past, not worrying too much about what we retain, but making sure that we expose ourselves to this information in different ways. He says, for example, people are sometimes advised to always learn something in the same place. So if you study, study in your library or study in your, I don't know, kitchen or whatever. And if you study there and there is research to show that if people, you know, having studied something, if they go back to the place where they studied it, they'll remember it better. However, you're better off to not do that to study it here and then somewhere else and somewhere else. So your ability, ability to retrieve the information, if you go to a different setting may be less. However, by studying that same material in different environments, even you are building up your reserve of information and that will eventually give you more information, even though in the short run, your ability to retrieve the information is reduced. A good example of learning things in different environments, learning and forgetting, building up a reserve is the way I use link on my iPad. Could be on your iPhone or Android as well, or on the web. So if I look at our mini stories, for example, lesson 59, I can read it in the full lesson mode or I can go, you know, uh, so here, for example, here's page, the next page but I can also look at it one sentence at a time. So that's a different experience. Varying the experience, the way we do things is a good thing to do. Here, for example, I have a number of words that I am trying to learn. I don't spend a lot of time deliberately trying to remember these words, but I can still go through some of the, you know, exercises here right after the page. So I might say, but well is accessible, I hope. Uh, and the qi in fusha uh, is in Levantine, okay. And I don't try too hard to remember these things. I just kind of go through them. The money, in other words, being, no, being, as seeing, how. Um, so I get it wrong. It doesn't matter if I get it wrong, continue. And then in what you will soon be seeing is the opportunity then to, to reassemble this into a sentence. I do it not for all the text, but I do it to some extent. But the key thing is I don't worry about what I don't understand. I don't worry about what I forget. I vary how I do things. Sometimes I do it in full text mode. Sometimes I do it, you know, a sentence at a time. Sometimes I do easy content such as the mini stories. Sometimes I do more difficult content. I never worry about what I forget because I know that forgetting is the key to learning. So I just wanted to mention that because a lot of people seem to get frustrated when they forget things. Fr forgetting is not a bad thing. Forgetting, l'oubli créateur. <laughs> forgetting is a good thing. You want to forget and relearn and hear it in another context and read it in another context. Trust the fact that eventually the vocabulary will stick, but expose yourself to a variety of contexts and don't just try to learn one sort of limited group of vocabulary items in one specific way, but rather build up your vocabulary reserve because you're going to need it. So increase your vocabulary by forgetting. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.